morning, church. Today is a very, very special day, and I'm so thankful that all of y'all are here with us. So today is our Youth Sunday event. So if you've been to one before, you know that you're about to be blessed. But if you haven't, this is the service where our youth, our Crossfire Student Ministries, lead the service. And this is something that we work very hard for. We've practiced. We've stayed up writing messages and prayers and, and practicing the music and everything that you can imagine. And we've even got somebody back there running the sound booth today. So everybody turn around and wave at Bailey. She loved that. But this is just a, a phenomenal Sunday, and we're so very thankful that you get to join us. Um, I know it's a cliche, but you hear that the youth of the future of the church, and, and we do believe that that is an outright lie here at Sharon. We believe that the youth are the now of the church, that they're going out serving God's purpose and doing God's will today. And we're very, very thankful that you get to join us for that. Uh, there's a couple of announcements that I have before we get started. So the big one that I want to highlight for you in your bulletin is that we are still taking up an offering for Epworth Children. Children's home. So you can see specifically the items that are needed on the screen, but we are looking to pick up specifically diapers and kids pajamas for the Greenville County District. Now we have a collection bin that's right out here. If you'd like to make a financial donation, that is available to you as well. You can just put it in the offering plate and write Epworth in the memo line and we're happy to go ahead and take that and direct it to the right place. Um, the other thing that I will highlight is Vacation Bible School is coming up quick. It's hard to believe it, but it is a little more than a month away at this point. Um, so we are asking that if you want to volunteer to help with Vacation Bible School, first off, thank you very much. It is a very rewarding thing. But secondly, there's a way to sign up. We want to know what talents you have and wh how you want to volunteer those. Uh, you can see Amy or Kelly, and they will get you pointed in the right direction, whether you just want to participate, whether you want to help in the kitchen, whether you want to help with the students. We will be glad to have you, and it is a very, very big blessing to be a part of that. So I say all that to say, let us open this morning with a word of prayer. Holy and precious God, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come together today in your house and be a part of your worship. God, we pray that as we go through this student-led worship service, that we remember that the students here are transparent, that they show only you, that God, the Holy Spirit, speaks through them to go out and make disciples of the rest of the nations. And God, we pray that today we are blessed by your presence through their talents. And we ask these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. I'll invite you to stand if you are able to sing our first hymn, Rock of Ages. <clears throat> Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in Please focus on the screens for the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May the ushers come forward. You may be seated. Let us pray. Holy and precious God, pour out your blessings on this offering. Use these gifts for the furtherment of your kingdom, and we ask that you, this in your holy and precious name. Amen. If you would, please remain standing for our next hymn. Sad peace. 
So another reason that today is very, very special is today is our graduation Sunday. So we always like to recognize those that have graduated, those that have, have worked very, very hard. I know that we've got several in the youth group that have gone through this before, um, but we know what effort it takes to go on to whatever you're called to do. And uh, today we do have a couple of special things to call out. So. Uh, for various reasons, there's a couple of graduates who could not be here today. There is one that is here, but those that can't be, we decided to get in contact with their parents and pull baby pictures and things like that. So we'll embarrass them just a little bit. But the first one person that I'd like to call out, if you've ever interacted with the church on Facebook, likely you've interacted with this person. Her name is Noah Tobin. Um, and Noah is very, very special to us. She came through the Crossfire student ministry team right when I first started. And now I'm proud to say that she has graduated from Spartanburg Methodist College. She's heading now to Ohio to uh, Methodist Seminary. And um, if you've ever gotten a chance to talk to Noah, she is absolutely spectacular. Um, she's an amazing person, and we know that she's going to continue to do some amazing things. So uh, we thank Noah for the effort that she's put in. The next person's here with us today, so I'd invite you to go ahead and come forward. And y'all will notice that he looks sort of similar to me. So I think my dad's back there tearing up because both of his sons are standing up here with mustaches today. <laughs> so this is my brother. This is Matthew James Pennell. And Matthew is graduating from Gardner-Webb University with a degree in music education. Just a BA in music. Not just a BA in music. It's, it's, it's a good BA in music. And Matthew is, is uh, I know that they have worried all for this moment. This has been a very, very frightful time in my family that I was going to pull him up here and older brother him and do something really bad. But I, I'm just here to say that Matthew is the most talented person that I think I've ever met. Um, pick up any instrument and immediately start playing it. Some of you have been blessed to hear him play here. And um, he's absolutely spectacular. From here, he's going to go and look for a job as band director, right? So very, very cool. And we thank you so much for all the effort that you've put in. I know that you've done a lot, and I, I love you immensely. So thank you very much. See, look, I can be nice to him every so often. It's amazing. It's amazing. And then one more who couldn't be here today, he's traveling, but uh, Caden Maccabee is another person that's very, very close to me. Caden has graduated from James F. Burns High School this year. Um, he is headed off to go, and actually, he, if you saw him on the news this week, it was a really, really cool thing. So he has signed on to go to a welding school. Um, Caden is, is one of my best buddies. If you remember when we bought the go or not the go karts, the golf carts for Epworth Children's Home, uh, I actually got to ride in one with Caden, and I hope he's not driving to Nashville because he almost <laughs> killed me in that thing. But um, Caden's one of my good buddies, and I, again, I can't tell you how proud I am of him, and I know that y'all over there are very, very proud of him too. So he's going to do some amazing things. Um, I do have something for all of the graduates that I will give. Um, this is a gift from the church, and we want to give you the Apologetic Study Bible because we do believe that we're covering a vast array of different talents, and we've got different fields that, that all of our graduates are going into. Uh, but no matter which one you go into, what field of study you may enter, we do believe that being prepared to defend your faith, that being prepared to go out and make disciples is something that is going to be relevant to whatever trade or whatever profession that you're going into. So again, um, we do have something for you, and we just thank you for all that you have done to the church. One more time, just a round of applause for our graduates this year. And at this time, I'd like to go ahead and call the children and Bailey, Riley, and Carissa Ford for this morning's children's time. Good morning. I want to introduce you guys to someone. This is Darlington, and he is a member of our youth group, and he's one of our friends, and we pray for him, and we write him letters, and he writes them back, and we talk about Jesus and catch up on him, and he lives in Zambia, which is a pretty far away place. Has anybody ever been kind of far away? You? Where have you been? 
Georgia, that's fun. Anybody else? <laughs> no? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to read you guys a little Bible verse before we get started. So Matthew 28, 19 says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Do you guys know of some ways that you can spread God's word and his love? Tell other people, that's good. Pray, that's good. Anybody else? Go to church, those are some really good ways. Read the Bible. Yeah, those are some awesome ways that we can spread God's word. So I have something that we're going to do. So imagine that this is you, all the way here at Sharon, okay? And imagine that this is our friend Darlington, who lives all the way in Zambia. Now, if, let's say you go to school and you tell your friend about God. Then this happens. Like that. You spread the love and the word of God. Yeah. So now imagine that you tell your friend and then your friend tells their friend, and you just keep telling all of your friends until you get to someone all the way in Zambia, like our friend Darlington. And then, when you tell everyone, this happens. It gets all the way to someone so far away. So, did you guys see how by telling at least one person you know and spreading God's love that it can get so far, like across the world? That's pretty cool, right? So, do you guys think that you can do that? Do y'all think y'all can go to school and tell somebody? All right. So, Miss Bailey's going to pray for us, and then you guys can go back to your seats. Dear God, thank you for letting us be here together in your house today. Please help us to spread your word and love to others around us. Amen. Good morning. All right. I want to start off by saying a little prayer. So let's bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for this Sunday. Thank you for this Youth Sunday. What a blessing it is that you are able to use people like us to glorify you. I pray that you are able to use us to spread your gifts and your good news. I pray that you are able to use me to speak your truth into the hearts and minds of this congregation. I thank you you for each and every one of your children that woke up this Sunday to hear your good news. It is your hands at work that allow us to all gather here today. I pray that we are able to see and appreciate what you bless us with. We are not promised what we have, yet we are here because of you. We love you, and we thank you, amen. All right, so for those that don't know me, my name is Jacob Seralt. Um, I've been going to Sharon here for like over 10 years, so I'm, a, I'm old. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's been great to see how this church has changed, um, just with new people and just new technology, playgrounds, and just everything. It's crazy to see how much this church has changed since I've been here. Um, so currently, I just finished freshman year at the University of South Carolina. Thank you, thank you. So, I know some of y'all didn't like that. I know y'all are probably Clemson fans, but that's okay. I'll pray for y'all. Jesus, <laughs> uh, Jesus, Jesus still loves you. Maybe, maybe a little less. But uh, <laughs> um, I never understood uh, when people said that college goes by really fast. But finishing freshman year, it goes by so so fast. It's crazy to think that I have three more of these and then I'm gonna be an adult, whatever that is. <laughs> uh, so before I go into my sermon, I wanna talk about uh, my speech class that I just finished up this semester. Um, I literally signed up for this class thinking that it was gonna be super easy, um, an easy A, uh, all you had to do was talk in front of people, but uh, that is so hard, talking in front of people. 
your, your hands start to get clammy, your leg starts to shake, and you have to like hit it to wake it up. You have to, you start sweating everywhere, like holy moly. But uh, yeah, our, our speech teacher, she told us that that was okay, that uh, those feelings were good feelings. So, so praise God for how sweaty I'm gonna get. <laughs> um, thinking about college was probably more stressful than actually uh, going to college. Um, I put a ton of thought into what I wanted to be and how I wanted my college um, experience to go. Um, the two biggest things I told myself were one, get out of my shell and make new friends, make more friends, um, and just find my people, which was so hard. It, it, it's, like talking, it's like talking to people, you think it's so easy, but it's so hard. But yeah, get out of my shell. And then two, find a church. Uh, going to college, I knew that I would either get closer or more distant uh, with my faith journey. And so ultimately, I wanted to get closer. And that's probably why I'm up here talking to y'all. Um, what people have told me and what I keep telling other people is that college is what you make it. So if you want to finally break free from your parents and go party and drink, USC is amazing. USC is a great school for that. <laughs> um, but if, if you want to grow in your faith and um, get to know about this guy named Jesus, USC is phenomenal for that. Um, USC has like 600 clubs, so it's pretty easy to find your people. One of the clubs is cabbage eating uh, club, where you literally just sit with buddies and eat a head of cabbage. So you're definitely gonna find your people there. Um, so yeah, um, and so I heard about this church called Midtown Fellowship, um, and so that was always on my mind. That was the place I wanted to go to and try out. Um, I kept telling myself that this is the church I need to go to. Um, so funny story, um, so Lauren Davis, um, and then my friend Lauren in Columbia, they both told me to try out the same church. They both said, go to Midtown Fellowship. So I was like, okay, there's two different Laurens telling me to go to the same church. Uh, I should probably do that. Um, and, and then the Lauren down in Columbia, she was like, hey, like Midtown is uh, hosting this thing at a coffee uh, shop. You should come. And I don't like coffee. Coffee is so gross. But I, I don't understand how people like it. But I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go there even though I don't like coffee. And when I went, the first guy I saw, this guy named James Davis, so Lauren Davis told me to go, and this guy named James Davis, uh, the first person I saw, and he grabbed me, and he introduced me to everybody. And one of the first people uh, he introduced me to uh, was a guy that went to Burns. Uh, he, was a Burn, he was a Burns alum. So, I mean, all these crazy coincidences. Um, if that's not God, I don't know what is. That's, that's too much to be just a coincidence. Um, so for the next few days, uh, Midtown College was hosting all these different events um, at coffee shops, at restaurants, um, at the fields that they have uh, at USC. And so there was so much to do. So I went to every single one of them and met so many cool people, so many great people, people that really care about you and really want to uh, just grow in their faith uh, together. Um, and so I went to every single one of them. That was like the highest high of my week. That was probably the best week I've ever had. And then the end of the week, that was the first week of school, the end of the week, I got COVID, and so I had to drive all the way back. With COVID, I had to drive in the car. I don't recommend that. Don't drive while getting COVID. Um, I had to drive all the way back up here, and I had to stay in my room for two weeks, two weeks doing nothing. I was so bored. So I was at my highest high, and then at my lowest low. I was just so not happy. Um, but that's, that's one lesson to learn, is that just count, count your blessings. So I could have gotten COVID later in the semester where, where classes were harder. Um, but no, I had it the first week of school, so classes were so easy. Um, it was easy to get ahead. If anything, I was super far ahead because I had nothing else to do. So I was like, you know what? I'll get ahead in my classes. That was probably the nerdiest, nerdiest thing I've done, but, <laughs> but I did it. And so, um, yeah, I'm super thankful for that. And so when I, went back, to, when I back, went back to school, it was a breeze. I was like three weeks ahead, so I was, I was living life. Um, yeah, so... Midtown was a super huge religious and cultural shock for me. Uh, one, it was a contemporary style church. So we have a contemporary style uh, service here, but it, it was fairly new. So growing up, I've been used to this traditional church. We sing, sing out of the hymnals and yeah, but at Midtown, all new songs, all contemporary songs. So that was definitely, that was definitely a huge shock for me. I wasn't used to that. 
Um, they had rotational pastors, which I thought was really cool. So it wasn't just Griff boring you up here every single Sunday. <laughs> it was, I don't, think, I don't think he's in here, so he, I can say that. That's okay. Um, Uh, uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, anyways, moving on. Um, there was also rotational bands, which I thought was pretty cool. So uh, one Sunday, there'd be a cellist. One Sunday, there'd be a, there'd be a trombone player. I didn't think uh, we could be in touch with our faith with a trombone player playing, but it, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. He sounded really good. Um, yeah, and also that there was like 400 people at that church, so a huge church, um, something I was just not used to. I'm such a homebody. I was like, what am I doing here? Um, yeah, uh, also there's a lot of hand raising at uh, Midtown, so I'm just singing the songs, just standing like this, we're all reading the stream, and I'm looking around and everybody's doing this, everybody's doing this, everybody's doing this, and so I'm wondering like, my God, what am, why am I here? What am I doing here? Uh, but no, it was great. It was great. Um, and then another huge shock about Midtown is that they have these things called life groups. And life groups have, my life group has really changed my life. Um, so what do life groups do? It's exactly what it sounds like. You do life with the group. You have a group and you do life together. Um, the three biggest things that make up a life group is one, you have group time. Two, you have rhythms. And three, uh, mission. So you're being missional with your faith. You're going out and uh, just spreading, spreading God's word and doing service. So that's mission. Rhythms is uh, making a habit every week to just hang out or do something. So Tuesday mornings, we'd have leader meetings. I wasn't a leader, but I liked all the people there, so I'd wake up for that and uh, go to that. Um, Thursday mornings, uh, we'd wake up early and go to a coffee shop. I still don't like coffee. Uh, <laughs> Maybe I'll pray about that, but yeah. So we'd wake up and go get coffee, and that was just, that was a great way to start my morning. And then I'd go to classes, and I don't know, it was, it was already high from there. Um, and then group time. So every Sunday night after church, um, we would talk about the sermon. So we'd catch up on life. Um, we'd have sermon discussions, so just talking about what the uh, pastor talked about that day, uh, making sure that we didn't forget uh, what was being preached about. Um, there's this thing called Review the Mission. So we were, just want, uh, we were just talking about how we're spreading God's word, how we're inviting people to either that church or just uh, to Christianity in general. Um, and then this little thing called Engage the Heart, which scared me so much because in, what Engage the Heart is, is confessing sin and uh, praying for everybody else's sin. And I was just so taken back. I was like, I do not want to tell any of y'all what my sin is. That is, that is my personal story that is up to me to deal with um but i caved in i caved in i told them what i was struggling with and they're just great people um really holding you accountable and really just they don't judge at all there's no judgment they really want to help you uh just grow in your faith so yeah my life group we met every sunday night we would play video games before we started we'd eat we would eat dinner together we'd catch up on life we'd discuss the sermon we'd review the mission and we engage the heart um, with my, my life group was so cool. They was, we were just a group of guys just having fun. Um, some of us at the Clemson and Carolina game, uh, we painted up, which means that we showed up to the game shirtless and we painted ourselves with numbers and all of that. I think we, we spelled out a spurs up. That's what we spelled out with all of us. And so there were so many people that probably thought that we were just a ton of drunk guys just painting up at a football game just acting silly but really we were just church guys that decided to do something so silly it was so fun um during spring break spring break was really fun it was uh our, our group of guys we hung out at lake murray we rented a house together we ate good food we hung out there's a jet ski so we were just pulling each other on the jet ski um just goofing off but also making sure um that we remembered why we were there um, so every night we would have um, just discussions about the sermons that they would send us um, and really being, in, uh, really being um, intentful about that. Um, we also did this thing called Service City. So one day, it was a Saturday, 
Uh, we partnered up with this organization called HomeWorks. It's kind of like Sakahachi, uh, but we spent all, just one day fixing up a home. And that sounds kind of dangerous that a group of guys would want to fix up a house for a day. Um, but we, we made it work. They invited us back, so we did a pretty good job. Um, they still want us there. But yeah, it didn't even feel like work. It was just us having fun um, and also being missional about our faith. So yeah, we were just a ton of friends built up on Christ um, who, really, who truly cared for one another um, and held ourselves accountable. So I want to ask you all, if we're being comfortable Christians, are we comfortable in our faith? Um, I thought I was a pretty good Christian going into college, um, which I realize now is just not a good thought to have. If you think that you're a good Christian, then that's just your pride kicking in, you know? We, we're just, we fall short so often that we don't deserve to just call ourselves good Christians. Um, I didn't realize how much I didn't know. I didn't realize how horrible of a Christian I was. And I didn't realize how content I was with what little I knew about the Bible. Um, so are we being comfortable with Christians? Um, and are we doing faith alone? Uh, because doing faith alone is dangerous. You might think that you might think a certain way, um, so you think that God thinks that same way. You're like, this is the, the logical thought I have in my mind, so therefore God must think the same way. Um, an example, I'm a Gamecock fan. I think all the other teams, they're okay, but not as cool as Gamecocks. So God must think that, or God must think that Gamecocks are the, uh, that USC is the best school ever too. If I think it, then he probably thinks it too. Um, but some people have humbled me, apparently not. Uh, apparently that there, there's other great schools out there. So I'll, I'll have to trust God on, on that one. Um, but yeah, um, I wanna highlight that there's no such thing as Jesus points. So there's not one person that's a better Christian than somebody else. Um, there's, no point, there's no point system, it's not a game. So I don't have more Jesus points than you. Uh, Pastor Griff doesn't have more Jesus points than me. Um, and we don't have Je more Jesus points than other people. Um, the bottom line is that we're all broken and we're all sinners. Um, none of us have earned to go to heaven, but it's the same story we've all heard, that God sent his only son on earth to die for our sins, uh, paying the ultimate price, so we could spend eternal life with him. So the main takeaway, um, where is your community? Who is your community? Um, in Proverbs 27, 17, this verse changed my life or my college experience. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So we, being a Christian isn't a solo ride, it's a community ride. We're doing this uh, together with other people. So who's holding you accountable? Um, who are you holding accountable? Um, who's encouraging you? Who are you encouraging? Um, where are the friendships that are built up on Christ? Um, and how are you furthering your relationship with God? Um, I want to end by talking about my sociology class that I uh, took in the fall. Um, that was just an interesting class. We learned about how people interact with one another. And it was really cool. Well, maybe not cool. Maybe that's not the right word. But uh, my professor, I don't think he was a Christian. I think he saw faith as just like a safety net for people. Um, it was just a thought that people had just so they weren't scared about dying maybe. Um, yeah, I don't think he was a Christian at all. But one of the units we talked about was happiness and what made people happy. And one of the biggest things that made people happy was spending and receiving from others. So it's buying gifts for other people or receiving gifts from other people. And that's exactly what I'm talking about, is just having community. Who are you helping and who are the people that are helping you? So with that, let's pray. Dear God, again, I thank you for all that you bless us with. Lord, I pray that today we begin to wonder if we have been comfortable praising you. Lord, that we have been shying ourselves to worship you in fellowship, to want to pursue you and be conscious of how we can better ourselves for you. Lord, no matter how much we do, it will never be enough. But you sent your son to die to wash our sins away. Lord, I pray that that doesn't allow us to get comfortable in our pursuit with you, that we continue to strive towards you and live accordingly. God, I pray that you continue to forgive us for our daily sins and struggles. Lord, I thank you for this community and for this church. We thank you. We love you.
We pray these things in your name. Amen. So, good morning, everyone. I hope you've all been enjoying what our youth here at Sharon has put together this morning. And thank you, Jacob, for sharing your awesome journey and how um, God works his magic through us. So with that, we're going to pray. Um, dear God, thank you for giving us a chance to see this beautiful day. Thank you for loving us despite our sins. Forgive us for all of our sins, even the ones committed unknowingly. As we start our day, I pray for your guidance and protection. Direct our paths and teach us the right thing to do. Let our words and our actions be ones that bring to your honor, bring your honor to your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for an answered prayer. And now we pray using the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power of glory forever. Amen.
Some glad morning when this life is over, we'll fly away to the home on God's celestial shore. I fly
it is. To, it, it is absolutely my privilege to be a part of what it is that y'all are doing, of where God is taking you. And again, just like I said in the beginning, it, it's because each of you understand that this is about Jesus, that this is not about y'all, this is not about the rest of the church, this is about Jesus. And you guys keep that at the very center of everything that you do, and if you continue to do that, his light will shine upon you. So thank you again, and one more round of applause for this group. With that, let's close in prayer. Holy and precious God, Lord, we thank you again for allowing us to come together and worship in your church. It is by you that we are worthy to be here and only by you. And God, we pray that as we go out and we make disciples of all nations, that we remember that it is, your, it is, it is our gift. You are our gift to go out and spread to everybody in this world. And we ask these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Go in peace.